All right, continuing on with the request that I got anonymously in the mail here. Somebody sent me $150 with four requests, and I'm doing them in order. I watched like all of them today and yesterday. So moving on to revenge. Um, thank you, by the way. I'm going to say thank you in all of these, whoever you are. Um, so revenge. This is currently streaming on Shutter. I think it's also on Amazon and a few other places I think I saw as well. So it's, it's a lot of places, but... This is on Shudder. I think it's a Shudder exclusive originally. And this is a film that I watched and I talked about on the podcast. And I was very blah and I was very like whatever about it. And when it was recommended or requested here in this letter, I was like, okay. Like, I like rape revenge movies. You know, I really like the I Spit on Your Graves movies and all that shit. So I was looking forward to going back and rewatching this because... I know so many people who are like big on this movie and I'm like, well, I really like rape revenge movies. And I remember this movie having really cool style. And I was like, all right, like, I'm going to give this another chance. This right here is like, I got this letter, which was awesome. I got the money, the 150 bucks, which was awesome. And I got this, which was a total fucking added extra bonus. Second watches are so important guys. Like, if you're on the fence about a movie, or sometimes even if you hate a movie and all of your friends love it, and there's so many people who praise it, it's worth a second look. Because your expectations, and I think that's what it comes down to. I think we go into movies with expectations, or a movie starts and we think we have it figured out, or we know the kind of subgenre it is, so we start to fill in what, what we want. Or something happens in the movie and we're kind of confused about that. And then it like ruins the whole film for us for, for the rest of the time. That's kind of what happened with this one for me. I couldn't figure out if this was supposed to be supernatural or not throughout. Because she falls off that fucking cliff. She lands on like a, you know, a little tree or something. And then she survives that somehow without breaking her back or anything. And then it's like ants are like come on to her and like freaking bring her back to life. It looks like almost like that scene from uh, Batman Returns when Catwoman's brought to uh, back to life by the cats. It almost felt like that. And I was like, is this supernatural? And then she, you know, she brands herself and she gets like the phoenix and everything. I was like, okay, what is going on here? And for some reason that really hurt my experience. But this time, knowing what I was getting myself into, knowing what that scene was going to be, knowing, you know, I was just like, all right, I know what's going to happen there. And so then I just paid attention to everything else going on in the movie and just accepted it for what it was, no matter what it was, no matter if it was supernatural or not, doesn't matter. And I loved it. I loved this movie the second time. That's crazy to me. It doesn't happen often, but second times can go from either like straight up garbage, something I really didn't like at all, all the way from the you know all the way up to loving, and then sometimes there's like blah movies like this, the first viewing that then uh, come up into awesome territory. All right, so you've got Jen, and she's flown out to Richard's place out in the middle of nowhere so that they can fuck for the weekend when he's supposed to be on this hunting trip. This film is like a cautionary tale for both, for both parties involved. This is a cautionary tale of, you know, obviously don't rape somebody. Obviously don't kill, try to kill somebody and leave them for dead. But also, you know, don't be fucking married men out in their, like, retreat homes and then flaunting your shit all around a bunch of people in the middle of nowhere that you don't know anything about and you don't I mean this dude is flying you out to fuck you behind his wife's back at his private little getaway with his buddies there and no one knows you're there and you don't know how the hell to get out of there and you're dropping drugs and you're fucking and you're doing all this shit and it's like man you're just setting yourself up for problems for trouble do I think she deserves what she gets no that is not what I'm getting at. But you do need to know better. There is that element to things. Like walking down a certain street at a certain hour, you know, looking a certain way or, or you know, whatever. 
Do the people who have things happen to them in those scenarios deserve it? No, they don't. But they should know better. It's just awareness. Putting yourself in situations where things like this can happen, it's like, yes, I feel sorry for yes, I hope this doesn't happen, but at the same time, I have to step back and be like, come on, man, what are you doing? Don't do that. You are just setting yourself up for disaster, you know? So, that being said, so I feel, feel like it's a cautionary tale for everybody. You know, don't cheat on your wife. Don't help someone cheat on their wife. Don't do this, don't do that. I'm not saying all of us are perfect and there's not things that we haven't done that we regret and all this and stuff, but you should know better. And, you know, this movie definitely plays on that. And it also, it doesn't really focus very much on the rape. With a lot of rape revenge movies, they really, really focus on on the rape aspect of the film. And this one's very short-lived, which is fine (laughs) because I don't need to see much of it to hate and despise the characters and want them dead. It doesn't need to be like some 40-minute drawn-out rape sequence like in I Spit on Your Grave. It's just, it's unnecessary. I get it. You're being shocking. You're, you know, you're beating your point home. You, you want them to hate the characters so much that when this girl gets her revenge, it's cathartic. And I get it. And it's awesome. And I agree that it works. But is it necessary to be that you know, in your face. No. And I think this film perfectly illustrates that. It's a very short-lived moment in the movie. Like this guy, this fucking Stan guy who comes in. And his character is pretty interesting to me because this is a guy who's like, he almost feels like he's portrayed as a victim of his desires. Like she came on to him when she was drugged up and he took that as she was actually into him his feelings got hurt she tried to get herself out of this by being like well you're just not my type you know uh, you know i just like tall guys whatever which of course was the wrong thing to say but that's not this fucking girl's problem like you know it's one of those things where it's just like you're fucking damned if you do you're damned if you don't in that scenario but like telling a guy that he's not big enough for her or something like that. Oh my God. You're like just slapping him in the face. You know, what you should say is, look, I'm really into your friend. I know he's married, but I kind of love him. And last night I was on drugs. Things got out of hand. I'm really sorry for what happened. I didn't mean to lead you on. She's scared. She's she's not thinking. She, she Of course she doesn't think this is going to happen to her. Whatever. But that's the truth. Like, she clearly cares about this guy. She's clearly into this guy. And she doesn't want to fuck his friend. Even if his friend was hot as fuck. Even if Stan was, you know, some Ryan Gosling looking motherfucker. Whatever. Whatever she's into. You know, tall guys, I guess. Okay, so fucking whoever. Okay, fine. That guy, whatever guy she's talking about. <laughs> you know, it's just like, mm, she's she's into this dude. And I don't think she would fuck the friend, no matter what. So that was that's all I would convey to this guy. Look, I'm here for your friend. I'm not into you. I was drugged up last night. We were just having fun. Like, she doesn't try to sell that at all. She's like, oh, I'm just not into you. So... If you were into me, you'd fuck me, is what you're saying. But I'm just not good enough for you. But I was good enough for you last night, but now I'm not good enough for you. I'm not condoning this guy's actions at all. I want to reiterate this a thousand fucking times over. I'm just saying that there's these scenarios where you're just like, okay, you've got to be careful. You know, you got to be careful with your wording. You got to understand the situation. You got to read body language. You got to understand what someone's feeling in the moment because this kind of shit can come of it. Like, I feel like if she talked him down, like, I don't think he went in there with this intention to rape her. I just don't. With Especially with how his character plays out, his character plays out as this really fucking guilt-ridden character. It's not something I've re- almost ever seen before in a rape-revenge movie. From, like, a, you know, a uh, mentally competent character. 
of course you have the characters in some of these movies that are like almost like mentally retarded and they're like oh my god I, want, I regret it I regret it no this guy knew what he was doing he's the only one that rapes her you know he's the only one that you know does anything to her in that in that way in the beginning of it so but then he's the most conflicted character throughout and then the boyfriend you know Richard he pretty much just turns on her immediately now he does go in there and try to pay her off and, and get her out of there like look you gotta go you know, I would have thought that he would just try to pay her off. Like, look, it, it was taking her away from the house and, like, putting her in, like, almost like a witness re- relocation thing. That was what was, like, over the top. And it would probably, if you would have went in there and been like, look, like, my friend was fucked up. This is so terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Like, here's a ton of money. Is that right? Absolutely not. Hush money and all that? No, of course not. Of course, the best thing to have done is be like, holy shit, I'm beating the fuck out of him. Let's call the police. But of course, he's not going to do that because then he'd have to explain to his wife what the fuck. And this is his friend and this guy's clearly a piece of shit. So that, of course, wasn't going to happen. But I feel like if he would have went to her and been like, look, here's a shitload of money. We don't ever have to see each other again. I'm so sorry for what happened. Like, you know, whatever. I think that would have went better. I do, but... You know, she's, she freaks out and is like, oh, hell no. Um, and then, yeah, the fat friend does nothing. And then they go and they push her off the cliff and she hits. And then they go off and they have their conversation. Like, we're going to just get rid of the body and, and we're going to do our hunting like we were supposed to and just go on, move on with our life. This Richard guy is a piece of fucking work for sure. Um, and I guess, you know, it's just, this is what your husband's up to while he's gone. It's just crazy to think that you never know what anyone's up to when they're actually away. It's wild. Um, and then um, she lights a tree on fire to break it. Like, you don't want to light the tree that's inside of you on fire. Although I guess it's the only way she can get herself down. So I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, that doesn't seem like the best idea. I would have moved around a hell of a lot more. But yeah, Stan just keeps trying to get her. Like when he realizes she might still be alive, he's like, oh, it's not too late. Like we can fucking save her. We can take her in. We can just get lawyers and, and we can deal with this. He is immediately regretting everything. He immediately wants to stop all of this. And it's just a, it's a very interesting character dynamic I don't think I've seen before much. Um, and then... Um, and then, yeah, she, she goes off and, and she, she runs into Dimitri and stabs him in the fucking eyes. This movie has incredible style and great music. And that's what really propels this. And I think Jen carries this fucking movie. She's awesome in this. Like, I do really like this girl. And her, like, freakouts in the caves where she's tripping out and she's, you know, takes this, this, can and she burns it into herself and then she wakes up and she like sees that she has like a phoenix like rising from the ashes coming off her just like she did she literally like fucking she kind of fell from the ashes because of the fire under her but you know she rose again from the ashes she created under herself like she straight up turned herself into a phoenix and that's pretty rad and she has you know this this brand there now and this girl's very attractive girl um but she's just badass as well it's so cool and then she wakes up and she has like multiple fake out dream sequences but it's rad it's such a cool style and her head gets blown off a couple times so you get a like extra gore and man this film does not hold back on the gore there's a lot of up close and personal fucking violence and gore on the film and it's like blood and guts and fucking people's chests and sides and ears and shit getting blown off and awesome awesome stuff I don't know why the hell I didn't love this movie the first time I'm kind of upset with myself to be completely honest and she even takes the drugs in her pocket that's why she starts hallucinating and all that so that she can cut this 
thing the fuck out of her without pain to be able to sit there and do the surgery. And then she has like this total like ayahuasca kind of trip out there in the caves. She kind of like finds herself and she like tries to learn how to work the gun while she's out. It's a rad sequence. And then she like rambos herself up or commandos herself, gets all the gear on, goes out there and her outfit is fucking awesome. <laughs> It's just like this bikini when she's bloody and she's got like this freaking uh, Phoenix uh, branding and she's got a shotgun and she's got, you know, her earrings blown up. Those earrings, man, those fucking gem in the holograms, freaking earrings are iconic for sure for this movie. Really cool. Really, really damn cool. Um, and then uh, I like that the recoil in the gun actually knocks her on her ass because she's such a, you know, she's such a small chick. Like 100% a shotgun like that would knock her the fuck out. Um, and then she gets into the big fight with a guy. He blows her ear off. They're running back and forth. He gets a piece of glass stuck in his foot that he has to dig out. Uh, I actually had a friend, an ex-girlfriend, who stepped on a piece of glass like that. She showed me a picture of her foot. It looked like war footage. Like It looked like she was showing me something of, uh, of some guy who stepped on a fucking landmine. It was crazy looking, what that piece of glass. She stepped on like a, a glass at the pool or something, and it fucking obliterated her foot. Like she had like wrappings and, and you know, some tube in there sucking out all the fucking infection and the blood and all that for months. Her foot was fucked up. From just stepping on one piece of glass. You know, you got John McClane and he's stepping on thousands of pieces of glass and he's still fighting terrorists in Nakatomi Plaza. You step on glass like that in real life, you're bedridden for months. You ain't taking on nobody. This girl's got her ear shot off. I like that the muffled sound, of course, of her ear being missing is great. Um, and then you get the shotgun showdown with the car and the... Um, that's pretty cool. She shoots him through the chest. I wish that would have been a little more graphic, to be honest. But this film has so much graphic violence, I really don't even care. Um, I thought for sure she was going to shoot the gas tanks in the back of the car and just blow him up. That would have been pretty cool. Um, but I like what happens because you get to see the glass in the foot and all that shit. And she, like, circles back around on him. And then she goes and we, and we get uh, Richard who goes and uh, gets on his motorcycle. And we get all this really cool lighting and this awesome music and he dunks himself in the pool the style in this film is awesome i can't wait to see uh what this what this director does next and then he saran wraps his wound after he's had this like whole side uh, shot out and he's like bleeding and it gives him away with positioning and she circles back around and let me tell you anybody who's played video games especially the game i'm playing right now religiously apex legends where you're fucking in a fight with people and your two teammates are down and there's you know, you're, everything kind of goes off of sound and you're trying to find that last guy and you guys are in a battle and you're chasing each other around in circles and you can't find him, you can't find him, you can't find him. It's the most frustrating, annoying shit ever. Whenever I lose a fight like that, you should have a camera on me and then post me so that I can be the most embarrassed I've ever been in my life because you'll see a fucking full-grown man throw a hissy fit like a fucking toddler. I freak out. Full screaming, top of my lungs, throwing shit across the fucking room. I'm a child. I'm so competitive. And just watching her, them go in circles, go in circles. I was like, oh my god, this is maddening. This is what it's like to play video games. It's just crazy. And this dude bleeds more blood than fucking Mr. Orange from fucking Reservoir Dogs. This is the most blood I've ever seen come out of a human body in a movie that's trying to be semi-realistic. Of course, you get more blood in like something like Tokyo Gore Police where the people are pumping it out like it's coming out of a fucking sieve. Um, but yeah, this is the guy bleeds so much. And then um, this guy's always got to talk, right? Speaking of Die Hard, you know, next time, you know, don't hesitate or whatever. And he's like, thanks for the advice. No more table. Um, same thing here. The guy has her, knocks her out, picks her up, tries to choke her. And he's like, chicks like you always got to give problems or some shit. He is just, he's, he's got to like, it's this ego thing. He's got to tell her, you didn't beat me. I'm fucking better than you. He's got to go out swinging, right? It's all ego. And then, you know, she grabs the gun. 
she just sticks her hand right in his wound. Oh, brutal. And then she grabs the gun, puts it to his chest, and blows this motherfucker away. This is almost like reminiscent of the uh, Eastern Promises uh, fight sequence. This guy's running around just drop dong the whole time. Pretty funny. Um, but you just don't see enough dicks in films. I'm going to start a petition. More dicks in films. More pussies, too. As I said before, you never see them. Never. You never see a vagina. You see people, you see dicks. You never see hard dicks, though. Hard dicks and pussies. Like, that's just considered too much. That's risque. That's pure sexuality, and kids can't see that. Who the fuck? What kids are watching these movies? Okay, why can't you put a fucking hard dick and a pussy in a movie like this? You really think that the audience that watches this movie couldn't see Jen's pussy and that dude's dick hard? Really? I just don't understand why that's so taboo. It's so weird to me. People are fucking bizarre. You can see a dude, you can see a chick's head blown off multiple times, but dear God, you can't show a fucking labia. You can't show a vagina. That would just be, whoa, 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 back it up. This is crazy. We're civilized human beings here, all right? We like head explosions, but no hard cocks. Let's just take it down a notch. Come on now. Anyways, thank you for, for this for the money, for everything, and thank you for making me rewatch this, because this movie's fucking rad. It was great. Yeah, awesome.